Welcome to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. I am your host, Rob Gothier, the ET Whisperer. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Any ideas expressed by the guest, myself, or commenters may not necessarily reflect the same opinions of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Enlightenment defined. It is the state of giving or receiving greater knowledge and understanding about a certain subject or situation. Evolution defined. The gradual development of something, especially from a simple to more complex form. So what is enlightenment evolution? The state of giving and receiving greater knowledge as we develop from a simple to more complex human being living on earth for our soul's experience. Welcome now and join us as we explore our Enlightenment Evolution Hour together. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is simulcast live every Wednesday at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific from the Enlightenment Evolution Hour page, Matrix Minds Facebook page, and the ET Whisper YouTube channel. It is also redistributed from the Forbidden Knowledge News Network and Conscious Awakening Network. Hey everybody, welcome to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. I am your host, Rob Goth here, and we are here today with a very special guest. I will be bringing in Carrie in just a few minutes, but before that happens, as all of you guys know, it is time for the announcements. I'll keep them as short as humanly possible. For the show, I have guests coming. Those guests will be announced very soon. And we will get that schedule up as soon as we can. I'm kind of on the edge right now. This has been one of the busiest weeks that I've had in a long time. Uh, but there are guests coming. We've got plenty of guests who are, are lined up. We just haven't set the dates in stone yet. So we'll announce those as we come. For the network announcements, you guys know that we have another show on our network. And that's called Out There Talk with Valiant himself. And he runs Instagram Live every Tuesday and Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. You can go watch him after we're done here tonight if you want uh, over there on Instagram Live. He's an amazing dude with an amazing show. He's had lots of good guests, and it's about all things that are out there. Um, as for uh, the other show that we have, it's still not ready to come back out yet. So once that comes around, I will let you guys know. Now for the longer announcements, the ET Whisper announcements, you guys know that we have an event coming up, and the first big announcement that I'm going to share with you guys is going to be about the giveaway that we're doing tonight. We are doing a giveaway for this event here, the Lumerian Life Expo, which is June 20th to 24th. We're giving away one online ticket for all four days of this event, and the live streams include everything that's done in the main hall and everything that's done in all the workshops. So this is going to be out of control. It's over $200 worth of value for the live stream ticket. And we're giving away one tonight to people who are in our audience. So one of you guys will walk away with a live ticket to this tonight. Hang in there. Enjoy. Also, if you guys want to buy tickets for this event, whether you're going to do it online or in person, you guys can come uh, to this link right here I'm about to put in the chat for all of you guys, and you can come visit us in Mount Shasta Live, or you can buy online tickets and watch us online. One of you guys will have to not buy a ticket because you'll win one tonight, but that link there in the chat, which is right here. I'm going to put it up for everybody to see. That link will get you right to the purchasing ticket area. Uh, and if you guys use, uh, I don't remember if there's a code for this or not. I'll, I'll let you guys know about that before the end of the time. But this is going to be a really great event, guys. So check it out. Um, you can go to the website itself. And let me go back. Sorry. I'm in the middle of crazy town right now. You can go to uh, LumerianLifeExpo.com and check it out or go to the link I put in the chat. Secondly, I have another event coming the very month after that, and that is the Stargate Crusader Retreat. This is a very small and intimate event, um, but 
Uh, I think there's going to be about 30 people at the max. This one includes lodging, and it also includes, uh, I believe, food there too. But it's going to be three days intensive workshops. So we're going to do a CE5 on the ocean, and it's in Connecticut. Um, and it's going to be a great one. We're going to have a lot of good uh, presenters there. Also, um, Tyler Ellison, our good friend, who is also going to be at the Lemurian Life Expo, he's going to be at this one too. Um, and we're going to do some CE5s out on the ocean, some workshops, some channeling, lots of good stuff for this one too. You can go uh, to the website stargatecrusader.com and get your tickets. And if you use a promo code, I'll, I'll get the promo codes at the end. I did not come as prepared as I had hoped, but that will be coming. And then in August, there's going to be another event that's going to be in New York. Um, and if you join my email list, you'll get more information about that. I don't have a poster for that one. Um, there's only a sign up thing and a video uh, so if you join my email list at etwhisper.com, you'll get all of that. Um, yeah, and I think Aunt Kalina, my dear wife, my beautiful sunshine, the love of my heart and life, she is releasing her channeling in the next two or three days. If you guys have not come to Kalina's channel to check it out, um, you definitely can, and it's, it will be worth it if you love channeling. Um, you can definitely check out, and her new video will be available in the next couple days, and the link for that is right there in the chat, guys. That's it for uh, announcements, and yes. All right, so let's get our guest in today. We have our guest, um, which is Carrie uh, Yehan uh, Guadalupe, and she is an author, holistic practitioner, a wellness moderate uh, of wellness modalities, including light language, the main light language that Carrie channels is a galactic light language that's connected to indigenous cultures. Galactic light language assists us with the clearing patterns, traumas, etc., that we no longer need or are in resonance with and will support us in aligning a next level. You guys know light language well. Uh, we've had some guests on with light language, but instead of me telling you about it, I think we'll bring in Carrie. And Carrie, welcome, and I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Um, I appreciate you being here. Everyone butchers my name, so <laughs> I know how that can sting sometimes, but welcome to the show. Yeah, well, thank you so much, and I, I didn't do a great job at, uh, at texting you how to pronounce it. Um, it's uh, Jehan Guadalupe, and it's a mouthful for sure. And but thank you. More importantly, this thank you for having me on your show, and I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm glad you're here too, and and you're going to be a part of this amazing event that's coming up, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, the one that's happening in Mount Shasta, which is a beautiful place, from what I've heard. I've never been. This will be my first time there, but we'll definitely talk about that soon. I want to start with you where I start with everyone, and I think it's important to know the story before the story or the person behind the story. So my first question to you, what are some of the things in your early childhood that kind of molded you into the person that could have the story or maybe, um, you know, some of the influences in your life um, of the early life that, that allowed you to be a person who was open for this experience in general? I would say as a child, I was actually very closed down. So I was very, I was depressed, very low self-esteem, low sense of self. I was bullied, quite ostracized, um, really, really not liking life at all. And so the opening up in my life came much later and it came through two, two physical things I was experiencing. And so one of them was my thyroid and the other was a back injury I had. And so um, my thyroid was, I was hyperthyroid and I'd gone to an endocrinologist and he said, oh, uh, you're so hyperthyroid. We either have to cut your thyroid out or kill it with radioactive iodine, but either way it's got to go and you need to live on medicine for the rest of your life. And in the same time period, I had herniated four of my discs in my back. And some doctor said, oh, the days of bending over and tying your shoe are done. You'll always be in pain. You'll never, you'll never recuperate from this. And there was something in me that said, this isn't true. 
I had no, I had no opening to any kind of alternative wellness modality. I had nothing in my background that that I could rely on. But there was something in me that said, "This isn't true." Like you, you don't get my thyroid, <laughs> and my back is going to be just fine. I don't know how, but but somehow it's going to be okay. And in that time period, I came across the book called The Presence Process from Michael Brown. I read that seven times. It changed my life. Um, and that book really started to open me up. And then from there, I found out, out about breath work. And so I started to study transformational breath work. And I was going to one training after another not to become a practitioner. Because at that time, I had no concept of me being able to help anybody else. Like I was I was the wounded one. Like I, it was not in my consciousness that I could support other people. Um, I started EFT and I studied Chinese medicine. And like I was just I was you know, just really trying to not just heal my back and my thyroid, but all the the heavy stuff I was carrying from childhood and the depression and the anxiety and the the low sense of self. Like I was, you know, I was getting through life, but I I carried I carried a lot of weight for sure. And so I'd say that it was I opened up much later on in life, um, and and it came through my physical body saying. You need something, but you don't need the traditional course. You don't need this conventional med. There's there's something else out there. Was there anything like in in your childhood that made you a bit skeptical to um, you know uh, authority figures or or medical industry or anything like that, or was this just really a deep sense of of unconscious knowing that just popped to the surface when when that experience happened do you think i think it was a very unconscious knowing because authority figures to me as a child and a teen and even into my 20s they were it like i had such a, a habit of handing over my power not accessing my truth like i really believed in like in the stories that they would tell whether it was from religion or from education or just in life in general like i really i really believed in all sorts of stuff that just wasn't true but i had no sense of that so i wasn't skeptical of authorities i was actually quite scared of them mm. um growing up all sorts of i mean anyone could be as even slightly be an authority figure and i would be afraid um, and and I, I would therefore obey. You know, I had that in, ingrained in me. Um, if I you don't obey this authority figure, I'll be in trouble, um, in deep trouble. And so I grew up in fear. So the fact that in my somewhere in, let's say, uh, my early 30s, the fact that I was, I saw this doctor in a white coat and I was like, you don't have my truth. That was a miracle. There was something in me that was that was begging to come forward because if you think about it, <laughs> funny enough, my thyroid is, you know, that's about my truth, you know, like my my throat chakra and speaking and my spine about having a spine in the world. Like, where is my backbone? You know, my thyroid and my spine were both very weak at that time. And the fact that in that weakness, I was like, no, there's there's something saying that this this is not true. This is, this is really not true. Well, that's fascinating. And, and I love the fact that, that despite hearing this grave news from the doctors, um, you decided to, to fight against that. And I've heard that a lot in, in our community with people who have learned to hone into their tuition and trust themselves when they're told, Hey, you know, you have to have a hysterectomy or, Hey, you know, you're, you're going to have to have your gallbladder removed. And people are just like, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. And they fix the problem. They, they change and they shift. But you, without knowing it, makes it even more fascinating. So one reason I ask the, the influence in the childhood, I'm trying to figure out um, kind of what type of person that you developed into. You said you were kind of closed down and, and I was to a degree. I had one or two phenomenal experiences and was interested in, in the type of stuff of ghosts and UFOs and stuff like that. But I really didn't have more than that one off experience that I just settled with, oh, it was a dream. Um, so so kind of maybe explain kind of the dynamic of, of your childhood, uh, of what type of kid that you were when you were young. Mm. 
So I, I functioned to some degree as a child. Like I had swim team practice. I had dance class. I was on a soccer team. Um, so from the outside, I looked okay. You know, um, I definitely struggled with weight as a child. Like in third grade, my mom put me on a diet, you know, so I struggled with weight for a very long time on and off for decades, I could say. Um, that was a really big uh, symptom of a, of a much deeper cause of some struggle. And so I was really, as a child, I think miserable is a, is a really <laughs> okay word to use. Um, and just to get to the extreme of that, in eighth grade, I did attempt suicide with no hesitation. I was shocked that it didn't work. I tried to take as much of medicine and alcohol I could find in the house. And I really was like, oh, I'm checking out. Um, so that was eighth grade um, that that I did that. And you know, I really just struggled heavily with depression and suicidality and why am I here and what's the purpose and why is it so miserable? And so it was really kind of um, carried a lot of unprocessed burden and so I can see, too, where over the years it was learning how to do so much. It was even just learning how to get through everyday upsets, let alone really big, deep traumas. You know, just learning how to, to function, learning how to find joy, learning how to get through hurdles. Like, it was such a learning curve. It wasn't set, in, set up for me in childhood, some basic things like, oh, you had a... Um, an interaction with a friend. This is how to, you know, apologize and learn and grow. And there was like no, no rule book. <laughs> I really wanted one. Um, and so, um, so yeah, early childhood was, was pretty brutal, I would say. Mm. Um, yeah, I struggled with some sexual trauma um, as well. You know, so my throat chakra and my first and second chakra and my willpower, like, good golly, you know, just... Uh, I was, I'm happy I survived, you know, not to make light of it, but I, I, I really am happy I survived it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad you are. And it's unfortunate um, too, with, with children who go through trauma when uh, society doesn't really give children outlets to come and speak, even if they feel safe with their parents, even if they feel safe with uh, a trusted older figure, there's not a ton of outlets, um, especially, you know, the, the later in society we get, the, the worse off it is, you know, in the nineties, when I was uh, a teenager, you know, that, that was, um, you know, guys weren't supposed to talk about their feelings, but that was getting less and less. Um, but a lot of, a lot of young women I knew, um, and a lot of girls that I knew, um, had gone through sexual trauma and unfortunately that's a, that's a huge, huge thing in our society still. But, um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you made it through. I, I had a friend, um, w when I was growing up, he's still one of my best friends. Um, uh, I, I consider him like a brother. He, he had an, an early childhood suicide attempt and he took a whole bottle of, of pain medication and, the next morning he, or the next day, late in the day, you know, 18, 20 hours later, he woke up and saw a suicide note next to him on his bed and was just so upset that he didn't, he didn't die. But now he saw that his life led him in a path. So that's, that's a pretty heavy, heavy experience. And I, I'm glad you survived it too. Do, now, normally I don't want to jump ahead too much because I, I want to hear kind of the rest of your story and get into that place from where you went through as a child to, to where you, you opened up and, and learned uh, channeling and all that stuff. But before that, you know, when it comes to the the, the suicide ideology and, and the attempts that happen as a younger person, now that you look back on that, do you think that it was important that that did happen to you uh, for your spiritual advancement at least? Mm, I really do. I really do. And I feel like it helps me a lot in helping other people. And I think one of the things that, it helps with is holding space for someone else who's going through a very dark night of the soul. Not that they even have to be suicidal um, to that extreme, but that, that real heaviness that we can experience as humans and to be able to hold it and, and not, you know, of course not take it on, um, but really hold space for someone else. And I think one of the, the beautiful aspects of it is knowing that, well, from my experience, 
in the darkness, there is almost this myth, or I could say a lie, that there is no exit out to the light. But when we're in the light, I almost feel like there is this like, oh, there's an option to be a jerk in this moment. There is an option for, you know, greed or jealousy or revenge or whatever, but I'm not going to take it, right? So there is options. But in the darkness, it feels like that option of light doesn't exist. And knowing that it does, knowing that it does exist, it's just hidden. It's just disguised within that real deep pain or within the darkness, within that shadow, knowing it does. It just, I think that's part of the, the help I can bring is holding that space while someone is in the depths of something. Um, and so it's even in my work, I know in galactic light language, I mean, this is a multidimensional, other dimensional, like beautiful channeled language, but I use it in a way that's very grounded to help people in their everyday life experience. And so I, um, I, I bring that into my work, you know, not as a, um, I think in a, in a, you know, in a very human, um, grounded humble way of hey I've, I've been i've been to Holland back and i can hold space while you're there and don't set up tents you know like <laughs> but like how do we if you find yourself there keep moving you know like <laughs> it's not about like finding like a, finding a campground to nestle in but uh yeah so it's a little bit of how i feel like those really dark early years have helped me help other people yeah, it's, and that's something I found with so many people who've had troubled uh, past or difficulties in their their childhood or young adulthood, or even you know into their twenties and, and thirties. It people who are in the spiritual community who take a position of assisting others or helping to teach certain aspects. Um, people who've been through that have much greater tool set with them to help others who are going through that because people who grow up and they're they're living a life that's pretty easy and pretty happy and pretty good they understand love and they understand connection and they can help so well with that but when it comes to hey i, I don't feel like i should live anymore um life's not not worth it it's hard for them to bridge that because they haven't personally experienced it so I, I totally understand where you're coming from so so let's bridge that then let's bridge that that younger child that that didn't have a way out to this person who who jump started their own path by being told hey um your health is, is screwed up and and we have to take this very important part of your uh chemistry and biology out of you to the person with intuition, take us to that, to the, to the person who found um, healing, who found channeling, who found light language. Mm -hmm. So I think that thinking back, I think this path started in a breath work session. So I was doing transformational breath work and I kept advancing in the, in the trainings, not because I wanted to become a facilitator or a practitioner, but because I wanted to continue learning for myself. But in one of those trainings, um, you had to practice on someone. And I remember being like, gosh, I'm not here to practice on anybody. Like I'm here just to like get through my own stuff. But I, you know, went through it. And so I remember uh, working with this one person, her name is Kathleen. And part of transmissional breath work is that you work with hands, you find, you work with your hands, you find spots in someone's abdomen or shoulders or back that are or stuck energy and, and you just gently press that area as they're doing their breath work and i remember finding a spot in her left shoulder and i was like oh my gosh i feel that <laughs> and um and so i was and she was carried out you know like yeah i feel that too and i was so surprised and um anyway so she, we finished the session and she was carried that was so good that was like, you're built for this. And it took me, no joke, it took me three years to bring that in. Three years. Like I really, that that sentence that Kathleen shared and her truth, it had no place to land in my consciousness. Like at all. You know, I had to really kind of work myself into someone that had something to offer somebody else. It was a real transformation of my whole identity to step into this work. Not that I feel like I've arrived or that I'm enlightened, but just a human who can who can help other human beings in their path. 
um, it was a really big transformation for me. And so from there, when I was studying EFT and this other modality called hollow wave, which is a consciousness modality, I started to be able to offer sessions. And, um, and that was just really beautiful. And I don't, I don't take that position lightly. Like it's really significant to, to be welcomed into someone else's path. It's a, it's a really big deal, you know, for me, at least I take that really seriously. And so, oh, sure. yeah, I started to embody that more and really it, it brought so much joy into my life to be in service to others and to relate to others. And, and in a way, like I grow with them, you know, I grow with clients, I grow with friends, you know, and in each session, I feel like I'm, I'm growing as well. And so um, at some point, um, I started, the light language started to come through my hands and I didn't know what it was. I felt really safe doing it. I really felt connected at that time to spirit. Um, and people would say, Carrie, I feel that, you know, this is what is happening in me when you do that with your hands. And so the feedback from other people was really helpful for me to really feel confident in what I was doing. And then about seven or eight years ago now, I was doing a four day ceremony in Mount Shasta and the ceremony was a prayer ceremony that had no food and no water for three days, three and a half days. Um, and so on the third day, I was very open and the verbal light language started to come through and it was so fun. It was so fun. Like, I just remember, but like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> and then um, you're not supposed to be talking during the ceremony. So it's not like I continued doing it after it started. But then at home, I would like be doing light language in the car or in the shower or vacuuming the house. You know, it's just the thing I did. And, um, and but I didn't bring it into my work because I was really self-conscious about it. I was shy about it. This is really weird. What are people going to think? I don't know other people who do this, you know, like. Um, you know, I had, I had that to work through. So in one of this, I was doing a, a group event with my good friend, Sierra and Sierra had said, Oh, Carrie, I really feel like we're supposed to, there's a sound that wants to come through. And in my head, I was like, Oh goodness. I really hope it's not light language. <laughs> and so she owned <laughs> three times and she has this beautiful voice and she owned in my head. I was like, Oh, thank God. She's taking care of that. And then she finished that and she said, nope, that did not take care of it. There is something that wants to come through. And I was like, well, maybe it's light language. And uh, so I stood up and I did about a whole minute. And that was a long, you know, a whole minute it was a big deal at that time. So I did a whole minute of light language and I was all awkward about it. And I sat down and someone said, you know, Carrie, that sounded really strange, but I felt it. And so that was the opening to me bringing it into my work. And so what would happen within sessions, I wasn't led to do the other modalities. I was only led to do light language. And so it really just evolved over time where all the other modalities that I used to do kind of faded away, but not, not what I learned from them. There was so much I learned in the trainings from the other modalities that I bring into the light language sessions. Um, so they're not gone. They're just not the primary thing I use in a, in a conscious way, at least. Well, that's, that's beautiful. And, and uh, when, when you're bringing this through, through the breath work, that, that kind of open that pathway in the door, tell us about the first time uh, channeling. Well, first of all, I don't want to assume um, the way that your channeling works. So do you connect to entities or groups or collectives or energies? How, how do you do that? For me, it feels like I connect to energies. And so the one group that I feel really connected with as a group that I can name are the are elves. And they're a very distinct light language, but the main light language I channel feels like I'm channeling a consciousness of three different streams. And what will happen for me is that the streams will change according to what the individual or group needs. And so if we're clearing out some heavy stuff, there is a certain light language. If we are then going to the next level of consciousness, the, the channel switches to a different um, consciousness that's then coming through. And so for me, it feels very like, a, a, like I'm channeling a, a consciousness that's coming through as light language. 
And, you know, like when I sense into it, they feel connected, but I don't feel them as a group. Like Lee Harris channels the Z's. That's like a group, you know, Paul Selleck channels the guides. It's a group. Um, and for me, these feel connected, but not in that kind of group like way. I see. I see. And and that makes sense. It's a. Uh... And that's kind of why I ask too. Most of the time when I'm channeling, I'm connecting to singular entities or beings, mostly extra dimensional, extraterrestrial beings. But um, sometimes I get those groups, you know, the collective energies um, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always a little different with the different beings and entities. But um, can you tell us about your first time doing that, connecting to this, um, these elf energy beings um, or the elf energy itself? Can you tell us a little bit about what that felt like, how you experienced and kind of what led up to you trying to do that? Or was it something that just came naturally? It just came naturally. So the, the light language that I channel, the main light language, the galactic one, it sounds very indigenous. Like sometimes I, well, oftentimes I use a drum. It can go from spoken to chanted to sung. And so much of it has a very indigenous feel to it. And so that's the main language. And when in, I'm in a group setting, the elves come in. It's very rare that they come in for me in individual sessions, but very often in group sessions. And so I was doing one a group session in person here in California, and the light language shifted. And well, before I even talk about it shifting, I work with one of my personal guides. I ask him to be my gatekeeper when I when I open as a channel, so that when the channel switches to a different channel or different consciousness i know it's safe so because you know I, i'm i'm very um say um i think it's uh like well let me back to chakras a moment for me like setting this sacred space before i channel is really really important to me and so when a new light language comes in what i well what i did in the past was i would pause and i'd be like what is this what am i opening to like what's going on here you know like um and just to be you know like channeling it's just want to make sure that what's coming through me is is just light language and nothing nothing funky right and so so i have a guide that i can rely on in the moment so when i'm feeling a new light language come in i know it's safe like I can know, like, nope, I can switch gears and I know what's coming in is going to be for the highest good of all here um, in a light, beautiful kind of way. And so in one of the sessions I was doing here in a group session in California, I could feel a different energy starting to come in. I did a quick check with my guide. I got a yes. And I opened it up and it was just this very playful joyful so much fun energy and what they, so well i just also to share too that my hands move a lot when i do light language so they're moving to to transmit the light language but spirit will also move my hands to um almost do like a charades and so if we're working with someone's say limiting beliefs and there the spirit will move my hand to the back of my head if we're in a past life or um, childhood my spirit will move my hand to point to a certain um, position and then I know oh we're working with ancestral line we're working with childhood so anyway so in this moment spirit uses my hand and points to my ears and makes this like pointy ear <laughs> figure and I was like these are elves <laughs> you know and so um, it was so fun and when I was done you know like, I don't interrupt the channeling and I was like, guys, those were elves. And people were like, wait, no. <laughs> it was it was just so joyful. So when they come in, it's it's just lights up the room. It makes me smile. It opens my heart. Like they're so playful and joyful. And they bring so much love and tenderness and play. Um, so yeah, I really, I really appreciate the the elves very much. Yeah, someone actually in chat was talking about uh, the energy of elves, but not really knowing much about them. Have you got to to learn about kind of like what an elf is? Because there's so many ideas and, and energies out about that, um, you know, mostly agreements that it's a, a higher dimensional earth type of energy. Um, can you tell us more about that? Is that something that you've come to understand through your connection with them? 
Um, I think a little bit. I do think of them as like a higher dimensional earth based energy. And for me, sometimes I, I just leave it at that. Like, you know, like I would love to get to know more, but for me, I'd love to get to know more through the through my experience and then go read up on what other people have said about elves or a certain consciousness. And so I do feel like I'm still learning about them. And for me, it's like, what are they doing in a, in a session? You know, so in light language, the way I work with it is that I, I do the channeling. So I don't, I don't think of myself as an energy healing practitioner that comes in and works on people. Like I work with them. I don't move people's energies around. I do the channeling of light language and I allow someone's higher self to, not that I allow it. Uh, I do the channeling of light language and I see that someone else's higher self is working with the light language as it's most appropriate for them. And so for me, when the elves come in, it's getting to know them, but it's also, oh, what are they bringing? They're bringing a certain kind of light language that someone's higher self is working for what reason? And so I got to get to know them a little bit from that perspective, like how are they helping us in this particular session? What are they, what are they bringing? What's the light language that someone's higher self can use to open their heart more or to connect more with their spirit, connect more with their spiritual gifts. And so it's it's what, they, what they're bringing is more of what I've learned about them than, um, you know, than other aspects of their, of their existence. Sure, sure. And that, I think that's always the, the best way to, to learn about them is the experience you have with them. And it's fascinating too that, that you ex explained it as working with the higher self of another person. I've always found that to be such a helpful aspect of, of certain people's modalities of channeling or light language or healing um, because that higher self of the other person knows the best for for them what's perfect and what's needed and required and even though you know our own higher self is a very wise being um if you're trying to help someone else their own higher self has all all the required information about right. that being you know so yeah. i love that um so tell us then where you first kind of started this and and started working with us and then tell us uh you know from that point up to w where you're at now and and the types of work that you're doing mostly now mm -hmm. so they when i started to really do the the light language as a soul um soul modality what i was doing in the beginning was tracking it from like what is it, what is it doing in the moment? So I would do the channeling. Someone else's higher self would work with the codes, and I would really just sit back and be like, oh, okay, we're working on the ancestral line, or we are, um, we're not we, but the person is working here and there, and um, and so and then kind of report in a bit. <laughs> you know, it sometimes even interject in English. Uh, oh, we're working on, you know, age two, blah blah blah. You know, that kind of thing. And then where it's come now is like I really just really step out of the way, as much as I can, and then allow the transmission through, and get myself out of the way. And then if someone has questions at the at the end, I can say, okay, this is this is what I was sensing. How does this feel to you? You know, it's very much conversational. Don't come in thinking I know someone's truth. I know the information that I'm sensing is coming through my subjective consciousness and my perspective and my history and all of that, my nervous system, my metaphors, you know. And so I try not to, um, well, I very much try just to to offer the, this is what I'm sensing. How does it feel? And so I work with that. Um, I work mostly that way. There is a way for me to change the intent of the light language to get information. And so for the most part, I, about 90% of my work, I channel light language as a healing modality. And then if someone says, okay, I'm, list, I'm interested in some information, what I can do is ask, it was set an intent to shift the light language to bring in information. And so for me, it's not that I translate the light language. It's not like English to Spanish. And I did see on Ruben's show, uh, interview with Ed, I forgot what season it was, 
But in one of them, there was someone that was translating light language. And it was so fun to watch. I was like, that is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> I don't even know how the person is doing it, but that is really cool. Um, but it's, it's um, I wish I could do that. And maybe one day, but for right <laughs> now, what happens more for me is that I'll channel the light language with the intent to access information. And then somehow it gets translated into a knowing oh, this is what, this is the limiting belief. This is what we're working on, or this is whatever. Um, and so then I offer it again, still as a suggestion, this is how I'm interpreting this. How does this feel to you? And we have a conversation about the information that I'm receiving. And so that's how I work with it now. Um, in group settings, I do very, very little of that. I, I do the transmissions. They can last a half an hour to 45 minutes. We pause, people share their experience, and I really don't interject at all, um, it, like like at all. Um, and so people will go around the room, and what's beautiful about it is that people can have very unique experiences. The last group session I did in March, um, there was someone that was in the room that said, Carrie, I, I felt Ganesh come in. Someone else in the very same channeling was working with their ancestors and someone else was working in their childhood. So the same transmission, but everyone's higher self was working with it so uniquely. And I just love that. And just love opening up the space for people to share their truth and their experience. Now, some people go on what they feel is like a shamanic journey in the light language and just journey with it and have their visions and have their the sensations that they are feeling in their bodies, have knowings that come through. And for me, it's really just stepping out of the way as much as I can and allowing them to have their experience of it. And I really... I love working that way. That's beautiful. And, um, you know, I, the, when you said that uh, person who did the translation, um, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. I was in Sedona uh, last September and myself and Lisa Royal Holt were at this little meeting that Ruben had and we both channeled during a CE5 and Jamie Price was there and she did some light language and then our last week's guest was there too, Jasmine, she did some light language and then the lady who translated it translated it in Japanese and then Ruben translated Japanese <laughs> to English for all of us. It was such a, such a weird and amazing experience. Um, it was really great but uh, I also I also really love the fact that you're acknowledging the fact that you're bringing through this information when you do translate it into a way um, where you receive information instead of like encoding others or, or helping with others. Um, that there's a recognition that I have filters as a human being. Um, it's very possible that this information can come through through the metaphor perspective I have. I find a lot of people who who deal with channeling don't always understand that. So they rely so heavily on what channelers say or or what the entities that are coming through the channelers say um, to a point where they almost give up their own power of, of understanding or belief. Um, and I always caution people against that because channeling is an art and not a science. It's something mm -hmm. that through every, even like myself, when I do this deep, deep trans channeling, there are subjects that I hear Trevin Ard uh, shift through their own sharing uh, of it because they're trying to get around my big dumb head <laughs> and they're trying <laughs> to work through it, um, you know, or my, my hard belief or whatever. Um, so thank you for sharing that too. And, uh, you know, when, the, the light language, I do want to sh have you share with us some light language a little later tonight, too, because I, I know everyone loves to hear the different energies behind light language. But as you said, you know, you're kind of uh, shifting it into a knowing. That's very interesting. I've never met um, anyone who has that capacity. A lot of people either are like, I understand the light language to a degree or I have no idea. I just let it come through which I always love too, because they're trusting that process. Um, but when it comes through and, and you're getting these encodings or, or kind of like uh, a knowing, do you think that that's just because this light language is coming through your body and you're so connected with the light language um, that, that the guides that are working with you and, and your higher self is just helping you with that understanding? Or is it um, just because it's running through the body or maybe something different? 
I think it's a combination of all of it. So, because the knowings that come through are very much connected to the person I'm, I'm assisting in the moment. And so I think it's the light language, working with the guides and being connected to, to this person. And so it's through that that I'll like, oh, okay, like someone will ask a question and I'll channel the light language and like, and then in my body, I feel like, okay, I have, I have an answer. Like that's what I would call annoying. But then I still am really cautious about then how I translate that. that this is what I'm getting. <laughs> how does it feel? And I think I actually annoy a few of my clients with that <laughs> because they just want to know. They're like, and I, I say, how does it feel in your body? Do we need to switch any words around? Like recently I, I got uh, some information that was about I said something about whether it was not deserving love. Um, oh, I said worthy. I said, you know, I feel like this is something about not feeling worthy of love. Does that resonate with you? And they said, oh, it's not um, worthy. It's deserve. So they fix it and they change it. So for me, the knowing that is I'm feeling in my body is that I have enough information. I'm on the right track um to offer this and then i'll know as soon as i say it in english i'll know if i've got it wrong because there's also a knowing like oh nope that didn't come out right <laughs> we're not there yet and i'll actually ask spirit am i on the right path did we did we get this wrong because the information for me is very grounded into our human ex ex existence our human experiences some people who channel are they're opening up to these where is the earth going and where how are we evolving and what's happening on the planet like really big information very expansive and i'm more of like the boots on the ground channeler who is in the in the mundane and in the, in the life experience of someone and so that's the kind of information that will come through and it comes through to assist someone in the in the light language experience that they're having and i guess i could just offer too that when I'm doing a session with someone, part of my intent that I'm bringing is asking for perfect remembrance, meaning that if someone needs to know what is they're releasing, if they need to know in their mental body, they'll know. If they just need to know as a vibrational memory, oh, there's a lot of sadness coming up or some grief and there's no story related to it then there's no story related to it, you know? And so I'm just always asking, like, do we need to know more information or is it just, we're going to let this pass and we've already processed this enough, you know, like that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, the knowing is, is it's, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a sense of in my body, I'm like, Oh, okay. I've got, I've got some information that's, that's I'm on the right track. It's okay to share. And that's, that's what I mean by knowing. It's not like I know someone else's truth. It's more of like, I, I have interpreted the light language well enough. It still might need some correction, yeah, but it's well enough to put it into English and offer it as something to, to work with. Um, yeah. I really love that. And I, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, to me, there, there's no form of, of, uh, you know, specific channeling that's, um, considered, uh, bigger or, or smaller. Cause you know, I've met a lot of people who are learning to channel, you know, when I taught it, I used to do one-on-ones a lot with people and they get to a point where they're like, the information's coming, but it's not, uh, specific to certain questions that I have, or it's dealing with my life more than all this, uh, you know, uh, world things or galactic things. And they get upset about that. They're like, oh, and, and it's like, well, you know, the, the trusting of what you're getting being the most important thing that you're receiving is what helps the channeling grow and expand. And when you feel that trust, maybe you'll get the answers, maybe you won't, but you also have to trust that the answers you're getting are the ones that you need because it, that's always how it works with channeling when it's coming through as it should. So if you're trusting yourself and you're trusting your channeling and trusting the energy and information, um, it really helps. So I love that that you've been able to do that. And I did want to say vocally for all of our visually impaired uh, listeners or people who might just be away from their computer and listening, at the end of the show, we are going to ask a question about something uh, that myself and Carrie have talked about tonight. And the first person to get in the chat and answer the question correctly will win a online ticket for the event that both Carrie and myself will be a part of at Mount Shasta. This will be an online ticket. You can do it from anywhere in the world and you can watch live uh, on stage 
and all the workshops specifically. Um, it's got a value of over $200. We're going to give that away tonight at the end of the night. So hang in tough and uh, listen throughout the conversation. And if you know the answer, shoot it in the chat as soon as you can. Um, and that would caution me to warn you guys who are on YouTube. Um, on YouTube, they have uh, the live chat. It's usually called top chat. You'll have to switch that to live chat to see the actual results because sometimes YouTube will filter the way you get your chat to the way they want you to see it. But if you put live chat, you get it as it's actually coming to you. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, back, back to that, the trusting. What do you tell someone who is new to channeling, light language, uh, energy work, any of those things that are having a hard time learning that trust in themselves or learning the trust in their channeling? What kind of uh, mm -hmm. helpful, helpful energy can you share? Uh, for the people who are channeling, not the people who are receiving it? Yeah, for people who are, are starting to learn how to channel or, or do energy work or who are doing light language. Mm -hmm. to really trust it i think <clears throat> excuse me um i think it's important to know where we're coming from i think that's where i find a lot of trust in myself like i'm not here to um to fix other people i'm not here because i need to be special um i that kind of that orientation i think to really the the foundation of it is where are we coming, where are we coming from? Um, Cause if we're channeling to uh, make our, a big name or we're channeling to, um, and that's not, that that's not a bad thing, you know, like <laughs> I love to, you know, like some of the, the channels out there, they're, they're really big names. Like we talked before about Lee Harris and sure. yeah, like, you know, like Paul Selig and Jamie Price, like big names. So there's nothing, I'm not associating that with, with um caution i love i love them um so i don't mean that but it's that sense of um where where are we coming from where are we orienting to why do we want to do it i think those are really important questions to ask and then from there trusting and so the other just i guess to open this door is really important is to really know what energies that we're working with to really feel them because even just to open this door like just for a moment, I do feel like the the darkness can be well disguised. And so it's really important for us to to be in tune with our with our egos, with our energies, with what we're feeling, the impact we're having. I've never had an issue, but I've had met people who were connected to what they call them uh, an imposter Archangel Michael. Right. You know, like we can tap into all sorts of things. And so I think sure. that when we're really opening, it's to really feel super grounded, to connect it, to really be in our heart, um, to really feel into the frequencies, be aware that trickery exists, not to be afraid of it, not to be, it's just not, not about fear at all, but just about discernment and being aware. And I think the more that we're aware, we're just there's nothing to worry about. Um, and so I also feel that setting sacred space is pretty important um, in doing any kind of work. And there's, I do it in light language, but there's so many ways to set sacred space. Um, so those are just kind of, I feel like I'm rambling some, um, some uh, things just thinking about for other people who are opening up to channeling. Yeah, no, I, I find it very valuable um, that you shared that. I, I feel very resonant with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with someone saying, hey, I want to be the best channeler I could be. I want to be, you know, I want to be able to do it for a living and want to stand on stage and help a lot of people. That's great. But if that's the only purpose behind it, it can you have to know where your ego is. You have to know where where your intentions are. So I absolutely agree. And I think um, that's very resonant. Um, most of the people I know who are big channelers, who have made it as channelers, who have made it as uh um, light workers or energy workers or, or um, light language people, um, all of them who I, who I know personally through their story and, and everything, all of them never intended to do this ever. Like it, it, it wasn't an, some of them, it was an accident. Some of them, it was very intentional, but their thought was never, Hey, this is what I'm going to do for a living. It came into their experience and found 
they found their path through their experience of getting to that point. Um, so yeah, uh, the natural growing path, uh, the the way of least resistance and the way of, of knowing yourself and, and being honest with yourself is hugely important. So absolutely, I, I appreciate that. Um, so let's go into the light language a little bit. I know you said you wanted to do um, some light language for us. Are you able to do maybe uh, a five minute uh, light language for us? Is that too long or is that too short? No, that's perfect. That's perfect. I love knowing time because then I'm not so conscious. Like, am I going too long? <laughs> just not, you know, like, just like five minutes is perfect. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, do you mind if I just hop on in and yeah, see the, what Yeah, and... however you want to do it. Okay, so... Um, so I'm just sitting in my mind this intent that this is uh, for the highest good of people who are listening now and for anyone in the future tuning into this. And uh, let's have some fun and see where we go. Shandwandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandolandol
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. We got a bunch of people in the chat too. Um, and they're sharing their own experience with the heart area, excitement, um, connection to Hawaiian, Lemurian energies, um, healing, celebration, all sorts of great things, uh, getting a third eye pressure, all of it. Beautiful. Thank you guys for that in the chat too. And thank you for, for sharing that, Carrie. Um, we're getting closer to the lightning round, which is where we, we speak about um, some benevolent questions that I would ask you, and then you can answer them uh, as quickly or slowly as you want. And then there's about five or six of them, and it helps us get to know you beyond the energy worker, healer, uh, light language practitioner, and it helps us get to know you a bit as an individual and a person, which I always love and think is amazing. Um, before we do that, though, um, the, the last question I'll have with you um, relates to the elven energy. When you're feeling it and you're going through that process, what's the one word that you can use that would describe what you're going through? Joy. Joy. Yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing the light language. Um, so let's get into the lightning round if you're ready. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. First question is, what is your favorite color? Purple. <laughs> There's a few of us on here who did purple. Purple's mine too. Um, I love that. Purple's great. Um, thank you for that. Um, what is your favorite food? Um, right now it's black lentils. Ooh, no joke. <laughs> yeah, black lentils with avocado. If, if I can have more than one favorite, um, yeah, I've been really loving the black lentils. I well, I'm not a lentil fan, but my wife Kalina uh, loves them. She she likes red and, and white and, and yellow and all sorts of them, uh, black ones too. Um, so that's great, that's beautiful. Um what is your favorite band and or song? Oh, okay. That's going to be challenging. So, um, yeah, because I don't actually listen to many um, well-known artists. So I listen to a lot of light language. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's good. Um, I don't think I actually have a favorite band. Um and let's see. Um, I guess most recently I've been enjoying Lee Harris's um, music. I could oh. at least put a name to it. Yeah. And uh, oh, very, yeah. very heart based, beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful music. So he's, I don't think maybe he's a band. I don't know. But he's a musician and a channel and I appreciate his work. Yeah. He, he is something special. As a human being, he's one of the greats. And that man is not just a beautiful looking man, but he is a beautiful uh, musician. And I know he works with a very famous uh, TV star from the country where he came from, somewhere in old Yugoslavia, I think. Um, one of the countries that broke apart in Yugoslavia, I can't remember. It was somewhere in Eastern Europe, but uh, and I can't remember his name, but he, yeah, we talked about it on, on the show that he did. And he's he's a beautiful musician, his music. So. You listen to a lot of light language. Who's your favorite light language person? Jamie Price, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also enjoy, um, I listen to a little bit of Wendy Kennedy on Ruben's show. 
Um, and I really, I could feel, I can really feel both of their light languages. And, um, you know, I think that light language, it's so, it's so varied and not even the light language I channel, I know it's not for everybody, you know? And so I think some people will not even feel it if it's not for them, you know? And so for Jamie and Jamie Price and Wendy Kennedy, I really, I feel it. I feel so nurtured and transformed by it. Yeah, and, and I've had the fortune to, to meet a lot of people who do light language, and I've had a, a fortune to listen. It's actually, I, I met someone back in like 2010 who was doing light language. It's the first time I ever heard about it, and um, I, I helped them facilitate one of their guides too, and it was amazing. But I would say um, that both of those people, Wendy and, and Jamie, both I resonate highly with their light language Um and, and both of them are, are good friends of mine and, and good people. But my, I, because I'm a nerd and I'm a language guy, I really enjoy it when Wendy Kennedy does her light language and different connections to the different star races. Cause I hear such different, to me, I'm interpreting on them as a, a sound of a language. And even though I know that's not what my language is, to me, it just feels and sounds that way. So it's interesting to hear these type of extraterrestrial um, vo vocal patterns. So it's uh, it's always really great to hear her, but uh, you're right, Jamie's great too. You're, you're great. I really felt that, that you shared too. So um, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, what is your favorite animal? Um, uh, I think my puppies, <laughs> I've got two of them. So Oliver and Lucy, yeah, my dogs are um, a big part of my heart, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, wow. I think outside what kind of breeds of, are they? Um, they're, they're doodles, so one, uh, Lab Oliver is a Labradoodle and Lucy is a little golden doodle. And, uh, yeah, they're really dear to me, really big part of my life. And um, <clears throat> Yeah, but I mean, outside my pets, <clears throat> I would say tortoises are like really, uh, really special to me. Not that I've ever met one, but just the the a tortoise. I would love to meet a, a really big old tortoise one day. Oh, that's amazing! Tortoise. Yeah, those are are pretty <laughs> uh, wise feeling uh, beings to the tortoises. And um, in the chat, Crystalyn Mears did uh, bring us the favor of who plays the music with Lee Harris, that's DeVore. And you're correct, I don't remember his last name either, but DeVore is is the guy and he's he's amazing too. Um, so out of all the places you've been, what is the place that you find most beautiful for the, the nature and the, and the view uh, visually, but also the energy? Last year, my husband and I went to the, the Utah, um, Utah, Arizona border, and it was really, really beautiful. It was a really big open spaces and the red rocks and the canyons. And we're going back to a similar place um, in about a month. And that, that really was, um, we went on vacation. And that's somewhere in like day two, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is vacation. It feels like some kind of spiritual retreat I just happened to be on. <laughs> you know, like um, I was like, oh, I'm really feeling this. I could really just feel so much is moving in me and um, just being opened and connected to nature and yeah, feeling really grounded and also um, like expansive and grounded at the same time yeah that kind of opening but a very grounded opening is um felt that there i also happen to love shasta i'm not really good at this lightning round because i have more than one answer <laughs> oh i i I'll, i'd love to hear them all i i was i've not been to mount shasta um but i i found sedona being very beautiful and picturesque and also energetically uh great too like you know, I've been in Utah, but but not in that area of Utah. I was more so towards the um, Ogden slash Salt Lake City and the country leading from the east to that through Wyoming and stuff, uh, which had some beautiful rock formations. And, and I was too young to understand the feelings behind it because I wasn't energy sensitive then. But uh, it was definitely a beautiful, beautiful place. 
So thank you for sharing that. I'm trying to think, I know I'm missing one and I, um, <laughs> before the last one. And the last one's the only one that I've, I've ever had um, bumped into a bit of resistance with just because people who've had rough childhoods. Um, yeah, so the, the last question then for our lightning round, what is your favorite childhood memory? Actually, I do have one, um, and so which is really great because I think we opened with uh, me sharing my truth about how miserable I was. Um, but there was a time in my in my childhood, in somewhere in grade school, I'm going to say the second half of grade school. Um, I'm not really good with age, that kind of thing when it terms and it comes to memories. But um, my my godfather was present and he, I called him Uncle Andy. He has uh, he passed when I was in high school. But I just remember that was like the moment where I actually felt really connected to another human being. And I just remember sitting in my living room being like, this just feels so right. This feels so right. And I, I felt joy. I felt love you know i just felt this like wow like there this is a really special moment and um yeah yeah and actually now that i think about it one of my and i don't really think about my early part of my life as having any openings but now that i think about it after he passed i really felt him and i had some really weird experiences well not not to call them weird now but i remember sitting on a swing and the swing next to me started to swing and there was no wind, you know, and then I was sitting on a floor in someone's house and a ball rolled and, and there was nothing that should have moved the ball, <laughs> you oh. know, and so I was and so I, I was like, oh, that's my Uncle Andy. That's my godfather, you know, and so, yeah, that's uh, it actually makes me just feel kind of, um, I don't know, just very content just thinking about him and, and that early childhood memory and even the memories after he passed. That's so, so beautiful. I, I really appreciate you sharing that. And uh, I, I always find that question one of my, my favorites to hear the answers with because, um, you know, a lot of the time we find some some of uh, our, our greater moments of opening in, in early childhood, or at least something that we hold on to throughout the years that, that brings us a fond recollection of a person or an experience. And for me, um, you know, being able to, to access those good memories really helped with a lot of the harder parts of, of that time of life, too, um, when it comes to trauma. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to share things about what's going on uh, with you and anything that you've got going on. But before that, I want to do two things quickly. Um, the first is say thank you for coming on the show today. Um, I know you came on short notice. Um, I know that that you're here with us uh, in a very free flowing way, and I, I really appreciate the fact that you did that. But I've also got to know you tonight, and I really feel great. Um, to be able to connect with you when we go to Mount Shasta and, and uh, get to know you a little more. But I feel that open heart and I feel that that humbleness and the groundedness. And I feel um, that the work that you do with that light language is, is going to be so helpful and useful for the people there and all the people that you've helped with. I really felt it in the heart too. So thank you for, for being on tonight. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Rob. I was so excited to get your email. I was like, tonight you got it. You know, <laughs> so I was just so grateful and thank you for letting me share some light language and for holding space as I share my truth with you. I just really appreciate connecting with you and, and, um, and I did say in my initial email to you, like when I watched your show, like I really, um, your interview um, with Interview with Ed, um, just to give some context to the listeners, um, you know, I shared that it was really, I really meant it. Like I really was touched by your interview and, and was looking forward to connecting with you because of that. Oh, well, I really appreciate that. It's very kind. And, and I appreciate it a, a bunch that you made space to come here too. And I try to, to create an opportunity for everybody to, to share their experience and kind of go through the nuts and bolts of it. One of my personal excitements to give you a little insight about me and, and the things that make me tick, um, that I love to see what makes other people tick. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, it's a very interesting thing um, psychologically and, and you know socially, but also there's an energy behind 
feeling that out that really gets to the core of the person and i've i've appreciated my exploration of that with you too so thank you um the second thing i wanted to do before we get to the thing is talk a little bit about the event that we're going to do and yes guys we are going to be drawing a winner for a free online ticket um which i shared a little bit earlier um and i'll pop that up here while we're talking what is your function at this mount shasta event that's coming up uh, it's going to be uh, and i'm sorry i don't have this uh there we go it's going to be on um, june 20th through 24th um and beyond so what are you going to be doing at this event so at the event on monday the 24th in the morning i think it's a 10 a.m slot I'll be doing a three hour light language gathering. And so in that gathering, I'll do, I don't know, like a handful of minutes explaining how I orient to light language and then just do transmissions. And so in a group setting like that, I do a transmission of light language, then people share their experience and do a transmission of light language, people share their experience. And we do that for the three hours. Um, and so sometimes the transmission can be about 35 to 40 minutes long. People have their their journeys with it, and we come back as a group to share, you know, what they experienced. And they have questions. I'll do the best I can to answer them. And um, so that I'll be doing that on Monday, and then I'll have a table um, at the whatever they're setting up tables to sell some of my books and answer questions and just be available to help in any way I can. I love that. And I look forward to getting to connect with you and meet you more. You'll be able to meet my wife and my daughter Lilith. They're both going to be there and, and come to this event too, which is going to be phenomenal for both of them, as well as, uh, as me and the community that's been wanting to meet them and haven't had the chance. Um, so this will be an exciting thing. Um, can you also share with us, um, if people want to get to know more about you, um, I, I've got all the links below, guys, whether you're listening to this now live on the three platforms it's being transmitted on or whether you're watching it on the three networks that play it afterwards, all the links will be available to be able to connect. But how would someone connect with you? Um, how would someone explore getting a light language uh, creation and, and session with you? And what types of things do you have coming up that are important and, and that you feel um, excited that you're being a part of? Um, thanks for the opportunity to share. You know, one thought I have is, is I do a live stream every month and I do it as a pay what you can live stream. But if you're listening to this and you just want to come for free, just email me and I'll send you the link. And um, the next live stream is on the 20th of this month. It's 1030 a.m. Um, Pacific time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what I do is I do a few minutes of introduction of light language and then I do an entire channeling of light language during the live stream. So that's like 35 to 40 minutes. And then I close. It, it's not like a chit chat kind of thing. There's not like a, uh, like a group forum, but it's a, you get your own your own kind of personal light language session. So it's a good way to also get to you get familiar with my the language that comes through me. You know, as I said before, we there's so many different light languages and not all light languages is for everybody, right? So the live streams I do every month, but if someone wanted a, a consultation, like a free consultation, like I, that's a set up on my website to do that, or they can email me directly. Also on my website is my phone number because texting works just fine. Um, so even just reaching out to connect works well and then, you know, go from there if um, you feel like I'm a good match. And then also I have some audios. Um, there are some uh, links that Rob is sharing, links to audios of light language. It's one album I put out called Illumination. And it's on YouTube and Spotify and other like streaming platforms. It's also on my website. And it's also just a way to, to, to kind of work with the light language that comes through me, if that speaks to you. Um, and then I do some writing about an article a month and I post them on Medium. And I've written a handful of books that are on my website if you wanted to check them out too. So um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty accessible. Wonderful. And I'm just getting uh, your website too um, to put it up on the screen real quick here because some people said, hey, I want the email. So you can find the email at the website, guys. And the website is right just, here. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Thank you again for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. I, I, like I said, I look forward to connecting with you more. And I also want to make sure that we give a ticket away to someone who is here. So everyone who's wanting to participate and win a free online ticket, get next to your keyboard, your phone. Uh, the first person that gets this answer correctly on the chat will be given that ticket. Uh, I'll coordinate that with you at a, at a later time. I'll get your email from you and do that. So the first question or the, the question that I'm going to ask you guys, there's only one right answer to it. And it's not like everything else in life <laughs> where there are many things. What was the one word that Carrie used to describe her connection with the elf synergy? All right, mm -hmm. guys, go ahead and give that answer. The first person who types it in will definitely get it. And there's a delay from us live to you. And boom, Julie Dean with the win, Joy. All right, Julie <laughs> yeah. Dean. I, uh, Julie, if you contact me through the contact us part of my website, which is etwhisper.com, um, you can uh, send me a message and give me your email or you can type it in here and even though other people won't be able to see it i can um either way whatever's best most comfortable with you if you go to this website and send it i will get you set up with that live stream ticket 200 dollars value thank you so much guys for participating um and i'm gonna look too on this live stream uh if you want to julie you can put your email here if it's not something you feel because it might slip through the filters. I don't think it will, but it might. <laughs> so if you uh, want to do that, um, you can. If not, just contact me, etwhisper.com, and I'll put that up on the screen too real quick. etwhisper.com. So if you go to that and send me through the contact, Julie, and let me know it's you, um, we'll definitely get you set up. So thank you guys all in the chat. You guys are beautiful. Thank you again. Um, I really appreciate you being here too, Carrie. It was a great time. Yeah, thank you, Rob, so much. So grateful and just really, really joyful just to have connected with you. So thank you. Oh, thank you too. Thank you to you. Oh, look at that. Our own Ruben Langdon is in the house tonight. Congratulations, Julie. Um, all right. So everybody, we will be back here next Wednesday at 10 o'clock PM Eastern. Uh, that's seven o'clock PM Pacific time. Outside of that, you have to do your own translation sometimes, but yeah. we will be here next week guaranteed, um, at the enlightenment evolution hour. I am your host, Rob Goth here. Thank you all who are here today. Thank you all who listen in the networks later or just catch the replay. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part, and we'll see you guys next week on the other side. Good night, everyone.